hi everyone welcome to the channel today we're going to be making this image gallery application where we are searching for images through an api call and displaying them within our application in what i think looks like a pretty nice sort of setup here so we're going to be using material ui to help us and we're going to be making use of the unsplash api now you need to create an account and get an API key. Um, I have already got my key and created a folder with the key. So I've got that ready, uh, mine's here. So if you wanna do the same, just export that key, um, or you can just paste into the URL when we get to that point. So let's jump right in. Hopefully there's some, there's some good stuff that we can learn. So I have got a Create React application and I have deleted all of the files except app.js and index.js uh, in the source folder. And I've also gone ahead and run this command to install material UI. And I've added this to the public HTML file. Um, so if you copy that font across and add it into this index.html file here, like so, then you'll be in the, the same place as me. Uh, we also need to install Axios. So if you just run npm install Axios, then we will be good to go. And I suppose that's a good place to start is just to make our API call and we can see the data that we're working with. So let's import Axios. Uh, we're gonna return um, a container here. So actually we need to bring in that container from Material UI. Um, So yeah, so we're just returning a container that's just gonna help with the styling. Um, and then let's run the server. So we're gonna have a blank project now. Our container's already working and we're good to go. So let's make our API call. So let's create a function to fetch data. Um, we are going to be using hooks within this. So all of, our, um, all of our components are going to be functional components. So, and we're going to be using a sync away as well. Cool. I think it's a much better way to manage our promises when it comes to, um, you know, readability of our code. Okay, so fetch data. So we need to make an API call. Um, so I'm going to do Axios, oh, so we need to await Axios get, um, and I'm going to pass our URL in there. So essentially what we're saying here is we're going to, we're going to make our API call and then we're going to put the data, the response uh, into this variable. So let's get our uh, URL. So on the Unsplash API documentation, like I say, you're gonna need your client, client ID um, and then search for us. So I'm just gonna copy this URL link and I'd recommend open up this documentation so you can, you can have a look at this as we go. So we're gonna paste in that link there and then we just need to add our client ID like this, client ID equals. And then for myself, I'm gonna do we need to change the, the quotes, but I'm just going to do API because I've already imported it as API. And that's going to work like that. Okay, so we've got our data stored in this response. Um, so we just need to now, let's say our data equals, um, we're going to await the response and pull up the data from the response. So if you're interested, you can just uh, do this and console log it, but we have our data stored in data. And then what we're gonna do is just console log that data. Now this won't do anything at the moment because we haven't called it. So we're gonna bring in the use effect. So use effect. Here, so use effect takes in a function. So we're just gonna pass in here, fetch data. 
Okay, so now if everything's correct, we should have some data in our console. Perfect, so we've got an object which contains um, the tall images, the tall pages, and then our results array. So good to know. And then each image has all of these properties. So they've got IDs, the dates they were created and updated at. Um, they've got URLs with different sizes and it's got some information about the user. So we're gonna use a, a couple of those, a couple of those things. All right, so now we've got our API call. We need to display this here. So we're going to use um, our gallery component to do that. Now, there's really only two components, a gallery and a form, or two parts to the application, a gallery and a form. So the important thing with this is we need to, when we type in the form and hit search, we need to be able to have that um, in order to change the query, which is here in this um, fetch data call. So we're gonna manage our state within our app component just for simplicity. Um, and I'll show you how we do that and, and sort of pass that stuff down um, to the component so we can make use of um, we can make use of it in the component but it's it's always stored in our application. So let's get started. So let's make a components folder components and we're just gonna add in our gallery.js. Now if you have this ES7 React Redux snippets you can just do RFCE and that's going to create a component for you. And then while we're at it, let's just create our input component, input.js, and we can do the same thing. And then we can import these components into our app. So import gallery from components gallery. Input, import, import, our input. Perfect. So now well, we just need to display them here. So at the moment we're returning this container. So let's actually return our input and our gallery. Cool. So we're gonna start working on the gallery. So what do we need in that gallery? So we need our images. And at the moment, we're just console logging those images. So let's take care of that. So we need to introduce um, state. So for that, we're gonna use the hook view state. And we're just gonna say, um, photos and set photos. So if you're not familiar with hooks, this is going to be what we call our, our state. So if you're talking about um, your old um, class-based, I say old, it's not, really, it's not really that old, is it? But if we were doing this, then you would have photos like this, right? Um, and then you could have an array of photos um, stored in your state. So that is essentially doing the same thing. We're just not calling it state, we're just calling it photos. And then set photos would be like when we're doing this dot set state, um, and then we're setting our photos to something here. We don't do that, we just call the function um, set photos. We just use a hook set photos. And then we can pass our comment here for the photos. So these names are, are totally arbitrary. You can call these what you want, um, but it's a good idea, just photos, set photos. And we're also gonna do um, loading and set loading. So let's go into what these are doing a little bit here. So this has created our, our state. So loading by default, let's set that to true. So when it first loads, 
we want it to be in the loading state immediately. And then our photos can just be an empty array for now, um, like this. So, this loading, so we want to say here, if we are loading, then let's just return um, loading. So at the moment, we're always going to be loading because it's just in our status loading. So we've got our loading dot, 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 dot. And what we need to do to fix that is once we've stored our state, we can just do um, set loading to false. So it's going to make an API call. Once it's finished, it's going to be false. Cool. So if I change this to something like uh, boat, you might see it a little bit better. No. Okay, cool. So hopefully that makes sense. So at the moment, we now have, if we look in our app component, we have this state of false. And that is our loading state. So at the moment, it's false because we set it false here. So just when I call this function, I'm just going to actually set load into true because we're not just going to use this in views effect. We're going to use it um, throughout the application. I've just not noticed a little mistake I've made. I forgot to um, put this empty right here. So if you're interested to know what this does, you can read all about it on the React documentation. It's, it's a little bit beyond the scope of this video, but essentially this is um, now performing just like um, component did mount used to. Um, so it will only run once when the, the, the page still loads. Um, and then if you want this to run again, you pass in uh, like dependencies. So you can pass in functions or components into here. So if the components update, then this will then run again. Um, so the fact we're passing an empty array into here means that it's, it's only gonna run once. It's not gonna update. Okay, cool. So we've got our loading state, but it doesn't look great. So what we need to bring in is a, a loading bar. So we're gonna get that from material UI. So circular progress from material UI core, circular progress. Here we have that. And then we can just say if loading return circular progress. And then let me just see if that's working. Let me just put that to true. Yeah, so it's working, it's kind of small, and it's right over there. So let's do, um, so it takes in props. So you can go on to material UI, um, if we search circular progress, um, it will pull up all of the properties you can pass into it. So size, thickness, can pass a value in there if you want it to be numbered. Okay, so let's have a look. Size equals, I don't know, 100. How big is that? Okay, that's cool. Let's make it 130. And then we want to center this in the, in the, in the middle of our screen. So we can do that in a few different ways. I think for simplicity, let's just wrap this in a div. and drop this in a div. Again, there's probably better ways to do this with CSS, um, but let's just do this. So we wanna say the height of this div is gonna be 100 uh, VH, which stands for view height. So it's mm -hmm. always gonna be the full height of the screen. We're then going to, let's just display this flex, and then we can justify content to the center, and we can align the item to the center. That should work. Perfect. So now it doesn't matter how big our screen is, it's always gonna be really centered. Um, and that's an easy way to do it, I think. All right, cool. So let's set loading now uh, at the end of this function to false, and we're, we're about ready. So. What we've essentially done here is, if we are in the loading state when our code runs, so it's gonna run, it's gonna start up here, it's gonna start doing this stuff, but it's gonna get here like immediately as soon as the page loads, 
it's not going to have time for this response to come back. So as soon as our page loads, we're going to get to this if statement. It's going to say if we're loading, then you know, return this. And when we go through this return statement, um, it will not run this code underneath. So it's just going to display this. Now, once we update our state, and once the API call comes back, we're no longer loading. So we set loading to true, uh, to false, sorry. So we update our state and we're gonna re-render. Um, we're gonna miss this loading because we're not loading anymore and we're gonna return this. So it's always good practice to have um, your loading um, something like this. There's loads of ways of doing it, but. Uh, this is the code that we're gonna that we're gonna focus on from now, and that loading. Um, yeah, if you wanted to reuse this in lots of different places, if this is a multi-page application, you just put this into a, a component of its own, um, so you can add that component into many applications, um, into many components. Sorry. Okay, cool. So let's take this API data. So at the moment we're console logging it. So what I want to do now is I want to say set photos and we're just going to pass in this data into our state. So now our state will have in it an array, uh, a results array. So in order to pass this down, we're going to pass it as a property to this child component gallery. So we're just going to say here like photos equals and then we could just pass in our photos state uh, but I just want to keep the array. We'll just put photos dot results um, which is because like I said it's got a results array inside of this and that's all we need to pass down essentially. Okay perfect. So now if we go to our gallery component it has the props with these photos in it so we can use those now within the gallery component. So I just want to change a couple things with this query. So if we go back to our Unsplash API documentation, we can see the, um, so that's collections. Yeah, we can see the, the parameters that we can pass. So I want to change the amount that we get per page. So I want to get 20. Um, and it, already sorts them by default to the most relevant. So let's just add that per page. So we can just go at the end here, ampersand per page equals 20. And we're good to go. So now if we look, we've got um, a photos with 20 things in it. Perfect. So now we're about ready to go. We don't need to add a container here because our um, gallery is within that container already. So yeah, in the next video, we're going to create our gallery and display the photos on our website.